I thank God uh, for this opportunity to stand before you all once again uh, with the Word of God. Um, I thank God for His faithfulness in our lives and in, all, uh, in our own lives and all of your lives as well. Um, I'm going to continue in our topic of the new and living way. Uh, the new and living way. We've been uh, talking from this topic <clears throat> for the past few months. And if you put up that uh, first slide, uh, I'll just uh, kind of run down uh, the outline real quick. Um, so as you know, we've been covering um, all the way from uh, how God saved us from, uh, from the wrath of God, from our position of uh, being destitute and away from <clears throat> the kingdom of God with the new covenant. Uh, then we talked about the new birth, the new heart, new fruit, and finally, uh, we have been talking about how God has called us into uh, this new family uh, through the name of Christ. And we've been talking about uh, the topic of the new family uh, the last several weeks, and um, I'm going to wrap up that portion of this overall topic about the new family today. Um, but I want to cover a very important, important aspect of um, whether our own family life or our relationship with other families in Christ. And uh, I'll just read Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 12. <clears throat> Ephesians 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So this is a very familiar passage. In fact, when we talked about uh, uh, the book of Ephesians, we covered uh, all of the chapters there, and especially this topic at that point. Um, so I'm not going to uh, you know, uh, rehash everything, but I want to remind us and help us understand that not everything that we deal with uh, in our families is, in a sense, through say, things that we see. We cannot be ignorant, ignorant of the fact that there exists, if there exists an invisible God that we worship, um, that we cannot see, there also exists an invisible, unseen realm that consists of spiritual weakness or spiritual forces that work to uh, prevent the kingdom of God being expanded or fulfilled on earth. Okay, so if you put up that second slide, and that is uh, what I want to cover in my first part of my message, is the spiritual warfare we have to <clears throat> embark on as families or understand what that means. So uh, one thing we have to understand is just as we understand that in the heavenly realm, there are, you know, there's God who's the authority, but also uh, angels and, and messenger angels and all these uh, spiritual beings that fulfill God's purpose on the earth. There is also a army or a kingdom of wickedness that is led by or ruled by, uh, by the devil. And we have to understand that many times we have to, as Paul is saying here, we have to wrestle against these in the authority that we have in the name of Christ. Okay, but when I say this, we have to be very careful. Okay, I know there's, you know, we sometimes think of all of these topics, you know, in a very, um, you know, in a very kind of hyped up way, right? We think we have to have, you know, all these uh, commotion and emotion, all these things, uh, you know, that's what we compare to, you know, like uh, how the devil tries to destroy us. But in fact, what I'm trying to bring to you is, he, he works and hinders our, uh, his, uh, our Christian life in normal, everyday circumstances. That's how we try to destroy marriages, our relationships with our children, our workplace uh, situations, or our, our work, the gospel that we're doing, 
is not through, uh, you know, it's not always what you envision, uh, you know, that what you might have seen on TV or, you know, people being possessed and all of these things. But he hinders the work of God in everyday normal situations, okay? And even uh, we can see the example of uh, Daniel, it you know, kind of gives a picture of how when uh, the angel came to Daniel, he said, I heard your prayer when you first started praying 21 days ago. But the prince of Persia stopped me and I've been battling the prince of Persia all these days while you are fasting. So the thing you had to understand is our prayers mean something. The answers might not come because there are things that we don't see or understand that are happening behind the scenes. But we have to stay faithful in prayer. We have to stay faithful in abiding in His Word, in abiding in secret relationship with Christ. Right? We have to not come off of that purpose, but we can't be ignorant of, of the fact that there exists powers of darkness that work to destroy us. That's why uh, uh, in Peter himself in his epistle, we have the verse that I put up there, be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks around seeking whom he may devour. He's in your families. He's in your conversation trying to disrupt your relationships between husband and wife, between children. He's trying to put thoughts in your head that will make you think you're not a child of God. He's trying to distract your identity in Christ away from the purpose that he separated you for. He's trying to bring uh, anxiety and depression and fear into your hearts so that you may walk away or at least slow down from the purpose of God in your life. You all with me? Amen. So we, do, we have to be, God is not calling us to, you know, uh, go get a degree in theology to be able to withstand. Our identity in Christ gives us the authority to be able to withstand. Amen. Amen? Every power have to bow down to the name of Jesus. But we have to be vigilant and sober and resist the works of the enemy. That's why Paul is saying, it is no accident that this passage shows up in chapter 6 after he said everything in Ephesians, but also especially after he talks about in chapter 5 the role of the husband and the wife, and then of how a children should obey their parents and how we should honor our father and mother. It is no accident that this uh, exhortation from Paul shows up directly after that because that is where the devil works to destroy Amen? It is not always in these, you know, uh, uh, expansive ways that you think about, but it's in daily life. And that's where we have to be sober and vigilant every day through prayer, through His Word, through listening and being tuned to how God is uh, uh, instructing us, how God is encouraging us, and also standing in the authority that he's given us as sons and daughters of Christ. Amen? We should never forget that. Through the blood of Christ, we have authority to stand against the wiles of the enemy. Through the spirit he has given us, we have the authority and the power to resist the wiles of the enemy. We, sh we have the victory has already been won on the cross. Jesus already gave us that victory but through the defeat of the devil on the cross. So we don't have to do anything, uh, anything much further than standing in the authority. And when he whispers things in your ear, we can rebuke the devil in Jesus' name and say, devil, get away from me. I am a son of God. Amen? Amen. Again, I'm not, I'm not a saying that every, you know, everything is from the devil. Okay, every physical illness, uh, you know, there are natural causes for things, right? Or mental anguish, it could be clinical in nature. I'm not an expert on those things. But I also know, but not all of those things are medical in nature, okay? We have to be vigilant and sober, understand that the devil brings things against us to destroy us. And that's all my encouragement is, 
to be vigilant uh, in those things. Okay, I'm gonna go to the, so having said that, I wanna point out three specific things on this topic um, that we wanna be aware of. Three specific things that allow the work of the devil to continue to succeed in our family lives and how we have to be careful. Three specific encouragements that are found in the epistle. Can you go to the next slide? <clears throat> the first thing comes from Paul's instructions in the book of Corinthians that says, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. So how you think about, what, if, that, if you think about what that means is picture that uh, you have uh, oxen that are trying to you know, plow the field, okay? So imagine there is a big uh, hulk looking oxen, right? A big, huge one. And then there's a tiny one that looks like it's not eaten in weeks, right? And you tie them together with a piece of wood and you're asking them to plow the field. Now, where would the oxen go? Where the big one is taking them, right? The little one won't have the ability to direct where they should go. The big one is going to take them where they both should go. This is simply what this means. Be not unequally yoked. Do not tie yourself to things that you will not have the ability to withstand. Okay? Do not connect yourself so, uh, be so intertwined in things in your life that will drag you away from the purpose and the calling that you have. No matter what that is. You all with me? It's a very hard thing to hear, but it's, but it's the truth. We have to look at our own lives to say, what is it in my life that is keeping me away from following Christ? for obeying his word on a daily basis? What is the giant oxen that is dragging me away from plowing the field of the gospel? What is this giant that is dragging me? What have I tied myself to that is taking me away from the purpose of God? You all with me? And each one of you have something like this in your life. And we think about this, you know, we often say this, in the context of marriage, right? Do not get married to an unbeliever because this is going to happen. And that's absolutely the truth. And I agree with that. But that is not the only instance. For example, uh, Ahab and Jezebel. Ahab was already a wicked man. He married Jezebel, who was a worshiper of Baal, and she took him even further into darkness, right? So that was, Jezebel was a giant oxen that Ahab tied himself to, right? He did all sort of wickedness through that marriage. So I absolutely agree with that. But that is not the only times we yoke ourselves to, to things that we shouldn't. Uh, whether it's just friendships. Sometimes we are so intertwined with friends and people that we have in our life, whether you're single or married. We continue to be so intertwined with people or personalities in our life that have such power over us that they have become a distraction. We, we spend our days and evenings in service to the whims of people that just have an undue influence in our life. It's time to cut yourself off from these things. It sounds painful, it sounds unchristian, but it's, in fact it's not. Anything that keeps you away from the cross of Christ, from the purpose that are from you, you should remove. We're not called to be, to be uh, uh, in, in communion with things that, that take away from him. Amen? Amen? Some of us are yoked with our cultural and traditions. And I have to say this to our community. We are so intertwined with our traditions and things we've learned from our forefathers back in Kerala that we have no connection to anymore. And we place that heavy burden on our children. We're so focused on these useless traditions that Jesus himself said, you honor me with your traditions, but you, you do not worship me. It's time to cut yourself off from things that don't mean anything. 
I'm not saying that it's not important to place import, uh, value on our, uh, our culture and all these things. But when those stand against the truth of the gospel, it's time to cut them off. No tradition, no culture is above the gospel of Christ. I'm sorry to bring the message, but it's absolutely the truth. Some of you can worship because you see somebody doing something that goes against your cultural values. There's nothing in the Bible. And it consumes you, and you're so consumed by these things. Oh my gosh, these are unbelievers. When in fact, they're just worshiping God in truth. It's time to cut yourself off from these cultural values that have no meaning. It's not in the Bible. I don't have the time to call those out. But if God is convicting you of something, maybe it's doing it for a reason. Be not unequally yoked to cultural traditions. And I'm sorry I had to say the next one. Be not unequally yoked to hobbies and media and all these things that consume our, consume our mind. Some of us are so intertwined with things that are supposed to be just pastimes that we neglect the call of God in our families, in our uh, in our churches, in, in obeying Christ, in abiding in his presence, they take us away from him. It's time to cut those things off. Amen? We can't say, I can't hear from God. God is not speaking to me. Well, maybe you should look at what you're connected yourself to. Shut these things out of your life. Maybe God can, you can hear God speaking to you. We can't question the faithfulness of God in the midst of our unfaithfulness. You all with me? I'm sorry to bring a harsh message, but we have to understand, these are ways, why is this connected to spiritual warfare? These are ways that devil has trapped us. These are ways that devil, the devil has uh, ensnared us and kept us away from the word of God. We can't say that we're bored in church when we were only excited by the things of this world. You had to decide what's important to you. It's your own decision. What do we need to expunge from our lives? Amen? Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. amen. All right. Finally, cut yourself. Do not be unequally yoked to your career or your future or your wealth, all these things in this world. If the moment that anything comes against and you're consumed by whatever you're achieving in this world, and has more importance or gets in the way of the call of God in your life, it's time to take a second look. I had to make that choice myself. I realized I was consumed by my career more than I was uh, 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 the, obeying the call of God in my family or, or, in, or in following him. You have to make hard choices for yourself. That means you might have less in this world, but he's faithful to give you everything you need. You might not become the CEO, but that's okay. I am the son of the Most High King. Amen? Amen. Amen. It is time to crucify ourselves to the cross and say, and say, I will not boast in anything but the cross of Christ. Then through the cross, I am crucified to the world and the world to me. Amen? Amen. The second point, I'm going to run through the, the other two. Um, secondly, do not give foothold... The, the uh, foothold, or Ephesians 4.27 says, neither give place to the devil. Do not allow, some of this I already covered, but don't leave an open door for the devil to just roam freely in your families. The things that you watch and allow your children to consume, what thoughts, what books, or what, or what ideas are they reading? I'm not saying we should restrict people from learning things that they should, but be careful. How the devil roams freely in your house. It's time to resist and stand against and not be foolish and ignorant of the things. Yes, we have the authority. Yes, we have the spiritual powers given us. But don't be ignorant of these things either. Amen? And finally, resist the devil and he will flee from you. This is why, uh, in James 5, 7, uh, this is why I said... We don't need pastor to come pray over us and cast the devil out for every situation. 
We might need elders and pastors to pray over us and stand with us sometimes. But sometimes we act like we're, you know, we're just nobodies. God has given us the spirit of God within us. He has given us a discernment to know when the devil is speaking lies to us. When, the, when you're fighting with your husband or wife, uh, maybe you're angry at something. But don't allow the devil to tell lies about your husband or wife. And we believe these lies that, you know, uh, make up this image of your husband or wife that is not true. Remember the grace by we, with we are called ourselves. Amen? And remember and withstand and resist the devil. When you are afraid and this unfounded fear and anxiety just consuming you and you can't do anything. Rebuke the devil. Maybe he's, maybe he's bringing lies that cause you to forget who you are. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You don't have to do anything special. Just rebuke him in the name of Jesus. That's it. And believe that when you say that, there is power in that prayer. Amen? Pray over your children. When, they, when you see them walking away, resist the devil in their lives. Rebuke the devil over their lives. Amen? We have power and authority we've been given as priests of God in our family. You all with me? We have to use it, utilize the tools that have been given us. <clears throat> so, I mean, I'll just conclude this section of my message and say, all of this I said for us to remind us that Every day is a spiritual battle. Every day the devil is working very hard to destroy our family. To make us turn our attention away. And every day we have to be vigilant, sober, to stay on the path that Christ has put us on. Amen? Not every situation that we see is based on things that we see. There's forces and powers that work behind the scenes that destroy us. When you, think, when you are wrestling with things that you can't explain, that you just can't come, off, come out of, maybe there is a spiritual wickedness working against that. But, but don't, don't lose sight of the fact that we are His. And the power and authority, that's why Paul says in verse 10 of chapter 6, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy, devil. If we have the armor of God, we don't have to be afraid of anything. We don't have to be afraid of the schemes of the devil. We don't have to be afraid of anything that might come our way because God is on our side. Amen? All right. So that kind of concludes all the various things we wanted to cover on the topic of new family. I just wanted to wrap up in the next few minutes Everything, we've covered so many different things, right? Just want to bring it home, and then we'll move on to the next part in the next few weeks. So if you go to the next slide, if you remember, uh, next slide, please. Okay, so while they're bringing that up, okay, there you go. So if you remember, I started this topic a few weeks ago, and I explained that the nuclear family is God's design for how we live out our life, right? So, uh, and I compared it to the nucleus or the atomic structure of every element, right? You have the uh, neutrons and the protons in the nucleus, and, and then you have the electrons, and the husband and wife are the, like combined by this inseparable force, the atomic force that holds them together in the nucleus, and then you have the electrons, which are like the children, whether physical or spiritual children, that are revolved in the or orbit of the nucleus, right? So this is God's design for the families, right? And this is how we live out our Christian purpose and our values. This is where we disciple each other and we fulfill uh, the authority and submission and discipleship that we've learned all these weeks that we've spoken about uh, all the various things, right? How, you know, how, what the husband's position is in the family, the wives, and how we are supposed to submit to each other and to serve each other 
and to love each other, right? And how the children should be obedient, but the parents should know how to exercise their authority over them according to the grace that God has given us, right? So this is the building block of the church, the nuclear family, right? And we're about to dedicate a new member of this family today as they're building out their nuclear family, right? So this, but one thing before I leave this topic, because we haven't just touched on this, is I mean, the red circle is kind of what I denoted as the building block. Just like the laws of nature is set, no man can change the laws of nature. Means every atom you see in this world is submitted or under the authority of these physical laws. Okay, nobody can create something new. Every atom is under the subjection of these laws. The same way, no matter what laws and rules can come, come about in society to redefine marriage or redefine who what a biological male or female is, we as Christians shouldn't lose sight of the fact that God's design for marriage is between a man and a woman. Amen? God made man and he made woman. No matter who changed the rules and traditions and cultures around us, do not lose sight of the laws and principles that God has put in place. And teach your children this. Live out these laws in your family life. But also, when we come upon people that are not in that mold, that's when we remember the grace side. We're not called to, just like uh, John says about Jesus, what? Jesus Christ was full of grace and he was full of truth. We can live out the truth without forgetting. Uh, without ignoring grace. We can live out the fulfillment of the laws of God without being great. Uh, 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 we can live it out without uh, ignoring the grace that God has given in our own lives. So don't forget that. And so next, uh, next slide. So let's move on, just fast forward through the various things. I know it's just a bunch of circles. But this is what we talked about is but our family in Christ is not just our own little family unit. We're all called to be families to each other. Whether it's our extended families or uncles and aunts, whoever you have, if we're united by the blood of Christ, that is a stronger bond than by, than by human blood. Amen? And we are called to be families of each other in the church group that you're in. Right? We disciple each other, we're submissive to each other, and we care and nurture each other as a family, uh, one family unit would do, we would do for each other. That's what we've been talking about all this, all this time. We think about all the things we talked about, about submission and authority and discipleship. So all of these families are connected together by the blood of Christ. So don't think of yourself as just your own family unit. We're called to be families for each other. But now I'm going to take that out further. There's nothing special about Hebron. We're called to be together as in this community. But that doesn't mean Hebron is better than another church. Whether there's another church in town, or whether it's IPA or Sharon, we're not better than them. We're families with them also by the blood of Christ. We're not better than Life Church or, uh, or any, any church that is called by the gospel of Christ is not better than another one. Amen? There might be a reason why you're here and God called you to be here so you should remain here and be under the discipleship of people that have put, put, been put over you. But that doesn't mean that one is better than the other. We are united by the blood of Christ. And you, uh, and you go to the last slide, please. <clears throat> and, and you can see the worldwide, and I'll, I'll use the term that Minu uh, put out there, Kurishim Mutal family. The world over, through generations, have been united by the blood of Christ. We are a family together under the blood of Christ. So that's why when Paul says, I'm sorry, that font is too small, but it says, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. 
in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? So there is no difference between a Christian here or a Christian in Iraq. There is no difference between a Christian here or a Christian in Ukraine. Or in Australia or India. We're all united together when Christ bore, uh, poured out every drop of his blood on the cross. In a sense, it spread through all these churches, uh, all these family units to bring us together under one blood. That's why the blood of Christ unites us into one family. And we see this vision. This is my last thing I'm going to say. This, we see this vision in Revelation chapter 5. When, when the seal, when the book is brought forth and there's great distress to say, who will open the seals? Who's worthy? Then they saw a lamb that was as if it was slain before the foundation of the earth. This lamb whose blood was poured out for all our sins to bring us together into one family. They saw him for the first time at that moment. Uh, not for the first time, but they saw him as if he had been, uh, as if been sh- bloodied and, and his blood coming out. That's why you can see this family in Revelation 7, 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindred and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hand, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. We should never forget this vision. When we worship Christ, this is a vision we should have of the Lamb on the throne, not anything else, but the Lamb that was slain for our sins and brought each one of us together. No man is better than the other. No man is above another one, but united together in the blood of Christ into one family. When we have this vision, we will have no apprehension about living out our calling in this new family of Christ. May his name be glorified. Let's all stand together.